Hello, hello. So I'm going to be doing something really different today, probably um, a little different from what other people are going to do. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me since a lot of you don't know who I am um, and a little bit about the kind of mystical magic that I bring to my practice and to my work. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about not so much about getting out of your own way per se or even you know money blocks or whatever i'm going to talk a little bit about um how to unfuck yourself in the way in which when you know what you're supposed to be doing and you run into that wall right you run into that wall and you kind of get stuck but you know all the processes Right? You know everything that you've, you know, you've picked up, you've read Law of Attraction, you, you're probably a spiritual healer yourself, and you're still in that place of, I've fallen and I can't get up, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Um, you know, where you just kind of get into the funk, and instead of allowing yourself to then manifest from that place, we're going to talk a little bit about how to pick yourself up off your bootstraps, wipe off your shoulders, and rearrange all of your energy so that you can move forward. So that's a little bit about what I want to talk about today. So who am I? Who is this, you know, crazy lady talking about stuff and cursing like a sailor? So my name's Elizabeth Pfeiffer. I've been doing spiritual work for over 20 years, and I woke up really early uh, or awakened really early and um, <laughs> there were no teachers around when I woke up 20 years ago so a lot of things that we do we learned along the way and because of that um, I really kind of chased down a lot of what I would call um, certifications and um, different tools and processes, right? Because I didn't know what the truth was when I first kind of, hello, I'm here. Oh, there's a whole new different world, right? And I'm in it and I don't know how to manage it. You know, I didn't know what empathic sensitivity was. I didn't know what energy was. I didn't know energy had no time and no space, right? So I studied everything I could get my hands on, like literally. It's like ridiculous, literally. Um, so give you an idea, it's like I have 25 metaphysical certifications that I don't use. I use like two of them, right? But back then, I didn't know which one was going to work, so I just took them all. I took them all and I certified in all of them, right? Because I was just on this path of what do I need to know, what do I need to know, what do I need to know? Um, so for me, when I kind of woke up, I woke up to, you know, disempowered energies. I was constantly being bombarded by external energies, entities, beings, demons, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I was on this path of, of empowerment. So we spent a lot of our time, at least the first 10 years, doing ascension work, which was knowing who you really are, connecting deeply into that essence energy of who you are and what you came here to do, how to hold your power, how to create massive connection with your source and realize that you are actually in truth that powerful badass like you have no idea, right? So as soon as I realized that, it was like, game on like my whole kind of experience changed we're getting downloads now i don't know if you guys can feel that so um that being said at some point in time my focus i was i was working now on money and manifestation but also from the energetic perspectives of it in money as an energy money as a a source of source if you would right and then of course as that came up all my mind goblins came out of the closet and all wanted to play <laughs> let me know if you can resonate with that right all the little mind goblins are like okay yay it's our turn we're not good enough you're not worthy you're a fake um you don't deserve this okay all of my little friends came out of the closet right 
And so I went on this journey of hiring coaches left and right, left and right, left and right, in order to be able to manage my mindset money from an energetic perspective, right? Because I'm very energetically oriented. So what happened was I was working with many, many coaches and healers. And um, unfortunately, I was not making any progress. I was spending a lot of money, but I wasn't making a lot of progress. And I didn't have the appropriate guidance, right? Because the way that we talk about energy and the way that we look at the energetics and use the higher dimensions in order to shift this one, there's a lot of people out there who didn't really get that. So I felt like in a lot of these money manifestation programs, I was kind of like the odd man out because I was always, you know, talking to the higher dimensions and shifting energy up there and having it come in and people be like, oh my God, how did you do that? Well, I went up high and I used the higher dimensions and I collapsed the timelines and people were like, okay. And then they just kind of laughed. <laughs> Michelle says, screw those little mind goblins. Yuck. Yeah, they all came out. I mean, like they all came out. There's like a, like somebody lifted the dam and they just started flooding in. So I did something. I did something. <laughs> I did something that um, out of frustration, which was I commanded to the universe basically said i'm not doing this shit anymore i'm not hiring another freaking coach i'm not paying another single dollar on this you know to to go through the same process over and over and then have it work for like 90 days and then have it stop working and then go back and forth in this pattern so i commanded to the universe that's it i want you to send me a master in manifestation I want the masters. I don't care who it is. Oops. I don't care if they're dead. I don't care if they're alive. I want to know who the master is. And I want you to send them to my house so that I can actually learn from people who kind of get me and understand me and can guide me in a way in which I can connect all the dots and make longstanding changes. Three months. So I made that request in meditation for three months. And on the third month, there was a very soft whisper that came in through meditation that said, can we help you with your alignment practice? You can just imagine like, who, I'm sorry, who are, who are you? And me thinking to myself, well, I asked for money masters. I didn't ask for an alignment master. And that's when... I got the message, your alignment is the primary source. Your money is the secondary effect of your inner alignment. And my mind just went, Phew. my second question was, I'm sorry, who the hell are you? <laughs> because you know, there I'm talking to people you can't see, right? And you may know them as, hi, Lindsay. You may know them as Abraham Hicks. I knew Abraham many, many, many years ago when I asked the universe for the truth about how manifestation works. And the universe sent me to a bookstore where I pulled out something about the vortex by Abraham Hicks. I literally read 15 pages, said this is total bullshit, closed the book and threw it across the room into the trash. So my connection with Abraham goes back a long way. And it took me 15 years after that to actually come to this space where I was open to receive the information that they actually had for me, right? Because I wasn't in that space when I threw their book away. <laughs> <laughs> this time around, I was open. I was willing to be teachable. I was willing to listen, if you will. And so what happened then is it took me 
whew, two and a half years, no lie, two and a half years, I worked with them energetically as masters of money, where they first, they didn't hold my hand or coddle me or just give me the secrets of the world. They made me work like a freaking dog, man, dog, in the sense of, they're laughing, in, in the sense of, I had to read every single article of their work. I went to a live workshop. I like was following them around for two and a half years, not like a Luvid fan because we actually don't see eye to eye on everything, um, but to understand the concepts of how the law of attraction worked, right? Because I'm all energetically inclined. So my thing with them was how to merge these two worlds in a way in which the energetic pieces that I have mastery in can coincide with the law of attraction and basically accelerate not only our connection and our alignment, but manifestation of the things we want and desire. Okay. So I did that for about two and a half years. We co-created programs together. Um, basically it's like I co-created the program. They were like, yeah, it's okay. You will, we'll hold that space for you and your teams as well. Only the law of attraction pieces, not the energy pieces. When the energy pieces come in, I have an entirely different group of energetic beings who actually hold that container for us. So, um, that's a little bit about me. So based on that experience of saying no and commanding something new for myself and having it show up in this kind of wild form, right? Because I was fully expecting to see a Facebook ad and be like, okay, that's my next teacher. I was not expecting disembodied energy. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was open to receive however that information was going to come through. It just happened to come through that way. And so I guess the biggest thing that I learned from that experience was money is a secondary benefit to your alignment and that your alignment always comes first. Your alignment and your connection always comes first. If you work it the other way, if you work it for money, I get all the money first and then the alignment comes, you're actually backwards because the, the money does come from your alignment from the way you are in flow with your own, what we call inner being or inner source. So yes, thank you. So <laughs> my guides are like, Elizabeth, you're talking a little cosmically for maybe some of these people. Um, let me know. I am totally cosmic. So I can come back to earth if this doesn't resonate with you and, you know, talk a little bit that way. But a lot of my work is multidimensional. And the reason being is when you work multidimensional, you have an ability to do what we call collapse timelines. What collapsing timelines does is accelerates manifestation so that when you are working, we call it from above and below. So we call it from above up here in the higher dimensions and below, which is here on the earth plane. When you're able to do this right here in the physical dimension, then you're able to not only accelerate things like your alignment, not only accelerate things like your mindset, not only accelerate um, healing, but you're also able to accelerate your actual spiritual growth and evolution by stepping into a bigger energy and being able to live from that space and that forward uh, from that forward direction momentum and to be able to really see yourself as this multi-dimensional, I'm getting chills, multi-dimensional being that is so powerful that you, here it comes, thank you, that you create your reality with your mind. If you can see it, then it's yours. And it's kind of like what I say, if you can see it, it is promised to you. Christy says, yes. Okay, good. Okay, I'm on the same we're on the same way. Okay. So if you could see it, it is yours. And I think what we do in our heads is there's a lot of, um, doubt, right? That we don't really believe that, um, that that is possible, that we have that much power. Um, and to be able to actually believe enough for it to come through. 
Money is a secondary benefit to your alignment. Yes, connection alignment come first, connection alignment first. And that is our mastery. So everybody's soul comes to the planet with mastery that their soul has mastered. Mine is connection and empowerment. And that's, you're talking perfectly. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> so that's, that's where we come from. Everything that you come to us and experience with us is going to be under the umbrella of those two things. Um, and accelerate. now it's money, right? So how did I get to money? It was about seven years ago. All of my ascension work and spiritual awakening work was closeted. I was asked to move in a different direction. Let me tell you this. When the universe asks me to do things, I am like kicking and screaming because it's like I'm in my comfy, cozy zone. I'm doing great. You know, I'm really excited. And now you want me to change and pivot and that's just like, but wait, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that, right? Because what happens? It's like shutting one door. And when you open the other one, for me, all the goblins came free, right? It's like, we want you to go do money now, Elizabeth. Open the door. Here are all your goblins that you need to work out. And let me tell you, it was a flood. It was a flood. And without that work that I did for those two years, it was literally, literally knuckled down study study being questioned have you ever had a disembodied spirit question you on your integrity do you know what it's like to have a fight with someone who's not there <laughs> needless to say it was very interesting <laughs> so so that's where we came into this moment of number one teaching people alignment number one how to connect how to actually get that sense or that feeling, right? How to understand that you and your inner being are one and the same. They're not different. They're not located in any other dimension. Your higher self is not higher. Your God source essence is not out there, right? It's a, it's a different perspective of all of those pieces as being a singular unit within so every time you want to go out for the things that you think that you need the universe is basically calling you back to soul because everything out here is just merely a reflection of what you're holding within so that is like the foundational piece without that you have nothing and it was a big statement. I don't even believe I just said that. That just kind of came through. But <laughs> without that, you really have nothing. Because that connection is your life source, is your power, is your energy, is your support, is your everything. That and using the higher dimensions. So even though we go upstairs, I call it, we go upstairs into the higher dimensions, you're not ever leaving your heart space to do that. How cool is that? And so um, the gateway process, which is what the CIA released, the gateway process, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, ever heard of that? The gateway process was a, a way in which you can use other dimensions and different um, levels of consciousness in order to be able to connect with other beings and shift energy in this one. I was fascinated. So I am going on a tangent, thank you. I am going on a tangent just for a second. I was fascinated because what I learned from that, because you know I found the program and I did the program, what I learned from that is 90% of the stuff that they taught in there, we were already doing. I was blown away, blown away, because I didn't have a teacher, remember? All my teachers are invisible. So it was, <laughs> it was one of those things where Blew, blew my mind. So I knew, I knew what that showed me was I knew I was on the right track. So the things that I wanted to talk a little bit about, and please feel free to drop comments, a disembodied spirit question, your integrity. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very one-sided conversation. <laughs> um, drop your questions in that things that you might have, um, because the biggest thing that I found in my practice was understanding what it is that you need to do in order to keep your alignment moving forward right i understood that 
I knew I had to think positive. I knew I had to change a lot of stories. I knew I had to bring in healing. I knew I had to do a lot of childhood trauma, which we do and we teach. I knew I had to remove and heal things, including the one thing that I didn't think I needed to do. And that one thing was healing my connection with my soul. Because I had a very fuck you attitude towards God, towards soul, towards the universe, everywhere, right? Because I had abandonment, betrayal. I had all this kind of funky shit, let me tell you. And it was those pieces that I had to heal first. And how I was avoiding it was anytime I would do work, I would go to my guide, I would go to Ascended Master, I would go to this being, I would go to that being, I would go to any being on the planet, Archangel, it didn't matter, right? If they existed, I went there. And the problem with that was when you're actually working on alignment and higher consciousness, all of these energies are great support systems, but they are not your source. They can help give information, prod you along, guide you in certain directions, and maybe even teach you things, but they are not your source. So until you recognize what that source is and bring that power back to you, that's huge. That's step number one. Step number two is how do we pick ourselves up when we've fallen down? spiritually help i've fallen and i can't get up right how many times have you had that experience where you just drive your train completely off the tracks never mind moving it into forward motion but what do you do when you drive it off the tracks and the next thing you know your train is in some swamp and you can't get out right we do that too we call that resistance <laughs> resistance when it takes over your train on the positive railroad to alignment can drive you completely off track oh Christy I didn't see your question here best ways to get into alignment I'm sorry I, I missed that I went on a tangent <laughs> big surprise um, so best ways to get into alignment. Number one, it is a kind of retraining of your energy and your mindset. So the number one thing that I would suggest about getting into alignment is start rearranging the way you think about what it is that your source is and where it's located and how it connects to you. So there's actually like a threefold threefold way, right? So what is source? We don't really give a shit what you think source is, quite frankly. God, source, creator, universe, inner being, Gaia, we don't care, okay? It doesn't matter to us. It only matters to what you think that source is for you, okay? So whatever that source is for you, we, we suggest you get very clear about that, number one. Number two, is to have the recognition that that source, that big expansive energy, thank you, they're like creator of all that is, okay, does not live on a planet somewhere far away as an embodied energy, okay? It's more of a collective consciousness of knowing and of creation is our our perspective now you can have a different perspective that's okay we're good with that but understand that whatever that is for you and whatever your soul is for you is not out there and the best way to actually connect and align with it is to move all of your receiving mechanisms antennas we call them all of the ways in which you hear all of the ways you activate that power that you have out here like little antennas right out here because that's what people do they read left to right instead of up and down when you le read left to right you are not only opening externally into the astral planes 
you're sucking in all the astral garbage with that comes unenlightened energies that pretend to be light and all kinds of other garbage okay so when you're out here you're not in here let me just do that visual again when you're not out here you're not in here either so the best way to get into alignment is to return all of these mechanisms for where you reach externally for your source and bring them back to you so it's like i want to go talk to source god creator okay great sit in here don't go up here don't go out here don't go out here definitely don't go down there <laughs> right go in here and I like to create like a little space in my heart where there's like a conference room or a meeting room where we can go and meet internally and connect, which brings all of my energy back into integrity, all of my energy off the outer world and back to me, all of my power off of everything and everyone back to me sitting completely fully aligned in my heart center in the conference room coming up with solutions for my life for my business for my money for my relationships with my source with my soul with my energetic being does that answer your question christy is that is that helpful lindsay says they they can help you give you information but they're not your source so good that's right that's right they're not your source uh, oh my god you're so fun <laughs> thank you um <laughs> we, we really don't give a shit that is the truth that is the truth um because you know god source creator whatever it is has different meanings for different cultures for different races for different religions but ultimately from our perspective it is all the same with a different name oh that rhymes it's all the same but with a different name and it doesn't really matter because everything is in here anyway and what's in here for you is in here for me so the best way when you've fallen down and you can't get up is to ring source help i've fallen and i can't get up right and in those moments when you're challenged with negative thoughts doubts or beliefs and you've fallen and you can't get up there's only one being that's going to be there by your side the entire time cheering you on rooting you holding the space for how they see you in your enlightened perfection which is in here lean on that it will help to keep you moving forward there's this one trick i'll share this with you i don't know how much time we actually have here but i'll start to round things up but there's one trick um abraham taught me and that they gave me this visual this is our higher selves soul god source be, be, um being inner being whatever it was and on a on a ladder and this is us and your soul source doesn't move from this ladder it only sees you in your perfection it only sees the things from its perspective you in your perfection it does not see below itself it only sees things from here with that it will never ever leave this space you down here you can ride up and down this elevator all day long as much as you want the goal is to get your consciousness from here to here as often as you can because this energy is not coming down to meet you in your discord in your disempowerment in your fear it is holding that space of awareness of your own inner truth it is our jobs 
to align our mind, uh, not our money, our mind, to align our mind, to align our energy with this level. Because this is the truth. Everything down here are lies. Does that make sense? So from that place, we approach our practice in, of business mentoring, of business alignment, and of money manifestation from a place of energetic alignment with your own inner being, from a very sacred place of creation, of connection, of empowerment, of knowing that you are truly a bad ass boss bitch because this is the energy your inner being is holding for you and it's total badass vibes total badass vibes so um the other piece they're just asking me to tell is how does how does my practice different from other people and i don't know that it's actually different from other people quite frankly um, the thing that does stand out for me is the one thing that we do that I don't know that a lot of people do is we do get messages from people. I just need to hear you talk for about a minute and I can get all the information that I need about where you're stuck, where you're going, why your alignment's all wonky, who's holding your power, why you have cords, where you're out here and help you rearrange all of those energetic pieces so that when you're doing the 3D work, the mindset work, all of those pieces come in a little bit smoother to help you release trauma that actually keeps you in cyclical patterns in your energy that actually sends messages off into the universe. Okay, Lindsay says you can go as long as you want. I allotted for an hour. Yay! Oh, we're going to go. We're going to go full hour, you guys. We're going to do some healing work then. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay so we do that we do all these pieces we're not just looking at your business we do look at your business we help with planning we help with pricing we help with you getting aligned with new money rates we do all of that but what we do which is the most important that not a lot of people do is we help you with your alignment so that you can manifest those things that you want in your business because if you're not aligned with things like your new pricing you're never going to be able to get that new price if you don't believe that you can get that new price. You're never going to sell that new program if your alignment and your energy is still stuck in a childhood trauma that says nobody ever wants to play with me. So that's kind of how we combine regular mindset law of attraction with energy and alignment. Because from our perspective, both is required at the moment for a lot of people is both absolutely required in order to make money now but there's a lot of people who have difficulty with flat straight on law of attraction right because they have a lot of other energetic issues and trauma and alignment issues that doesn't allow them to get there and the only difference between our practices is those energetic recalibrations that we do just helps you get to the law of attraction piece faster it's not a if and or do it's do them together move faster can you do law of attraction for 10 years and finally get the results you want absolutely do you want to spend 10 years doing that when you can attract things like energy work and realignment and healing and do law of attraction and be able to get to the same spot in five years yes and that's where i come in because that's how i do things I tell people all the time, I go hard and I go fast because I don't want to wait the 10 years. I want it in five. And yes, I will do the work and I will cry my eyes out for two weeks in order to be able to do that because I want to move fast. Do I have impatient problems? Probably. <laughs> but that's how I do my work and my clients who come to me, they want to go hard and fast too. They don't want to wait 10 years. Right. And Abraham has told me that's okay, but eventually you will get to the point where your healing work becomes less and your law of attraction work becomes more. 
but the healing is what we need in order to raise that umbrella okay cool do we want to do some healing work let's let's do some trauma work i'm very excited for that do you want to do that i do need consent of course anytime but if you do let me know and if anything was triggered by anything that i said let me know that below because as we do the healing work we may be able to clear that out for you so absolutely um let me know and i think there is like a 20 second delay because i'm not seeing them in t in the appropriate time so i'm just going to pause here just for a second um to make sure that i'm reading all the comments i have a yes from michelle cool okay yay Okay. Yay, yay, yay. I've been doing so much talking, I'm sweating. <laughs> the best life now. Here we go. Oh, righty. Oh, I lost my necklace. The nobody wants to play was a little triggering. Yes. Yes. I have that one too. Right? Nobody wants to play with me. Um, I actually had that from childhood when um, I had my sweet 16 and my parents held it. Was it 16? Maybe it was 15. Held it in my house and nobody showed up to my birthday party. So, yeah, nobody wanted to play with me. So that was a little traumatic. Okay. All right. Just had to fix my necklace. Sorry. All right. So let's do this. We're going to release some trauma today. It's going to be so easy. You guys are going to like shit bricks. I'm serious. It's going to be literally, we're going to release this in five minutes. I'm not kidding. So here we go. Cause we're going to do it energetically. And then we're going to add the law of attraction pieces to it. Right. We're going to do a little bit. I can't connect this hard and fast. Yes, please. Okay, cool. Hard and fast. We're going to do it hard and fast. So here's what we're going to do. Please feel free to share your experiences in the comments unless they're personal so when we say trauma healing i don't suggest that you go into um really deep trauma unless we're going to work together one-to-one -to -one afterwards okay because in this type of format to go that deep into childhood um, abuse or um any other type of victimization energy would not really serve your best and highest good it could like lift off the box and then you're left with oh right we don't want to do that so think of something else that's a little less um intense so let me define a trauma real quick for you so a trauma for a soul in your energy can be any situation that was scary enough or confusing enough for the soul that's a terrible naughty joke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, tra traumatizing to the soul. So it could really be like your parents arguing when you were a child, right? And you took that on. It was so scary or that event was so confusing that what happens is the soul actually splinters from your energy and that creates a trauma so it could be anything in which um you felt or at some point in time was super confusing to you super scary or um something that just is a pattern for you whatever that pattern is type what comes up for you in the box below and christy you could probably do the nobody wants to play with play with me tr trigger that can actually create trauma for young souls in their childhood right because they feel abandoned they feel rejected you could feel betrayed like so i had a lot of um i had a lot of uh victim energy as a child when people would uh students you know other childhood people would make fun of me right or um they would ostracize me right so at the age of like you know five six seven that is traumatizing so if you still have like a pattern nowadays where you're not part of the group nobody wants to hang around you like that type of thing that could be a recycling pattern 
So if you have any of those, type them in the comments. And here's the thing, write it, if you write it down, make sure you, your handwriting is very clear because the words have to be exactly how you say them. You can't change a pronoun. You can't change the English around it. It has to be exactly the way you say it. So if it's like, um, I need, okay, so here's Michelle. I was hearing, I need healing around settling in relationships. Okay, so for Michelle, that would be healing around settling in relationships, okay? You don't change it. You can't say, you know, I want healing around, you know, being better and relate. You can't change it. Okay. So keep that there. I didn't even see those comments. Where did they come from? <laughs> okay. Um, Lindy says healing around self-worth and receiving. Okay. So you have the themes. A lot of you have the themes around where it is that you want to go. So in that moment, in this moment now, I'm just going to take a minute for you to write down what that situation was. So close your eyes for a minute and imagine going through a Rolodex of time, going back through time through like a Rolodex and then stopping at the area and the age of when this first incident occurred for you. So for Michelle, needing healing around settling in relationships. So Michelle, you're going to go through your Rolodex. And when was the first time you had an issue with a relationship that may have sparked this belief system? Okay. First hits, folks, do not analyze this. First hits. And what I suggest you do is you feel into the energy of it first. It's kind of like, okay, I got the energy and then go through the Rolodex and see what age you were. So Lindy, same thing, feel into the energy. When was the first time that you felt you had self-worth and receiving issues? Feel into the energy first, get the energy and then go through the Rolodex. What age was that? So let's just find the energy and the ages first. Let me know your ages below. Part two to that will be once you have the energy and the age, you're going to ask that age of you, that six-year-old, that seven-year-old, that 15-year-old, whatever age you are, What belief system did it develop, did it say, did it decide based on that situation? For example, if I was 16 and nobody wanted to play with me, I decided at the age of 16, I'm going back, that I'm not good enough to be around. Okay, so that sentence, I'm not good enough to be around, write it down. So find the energy, go to the age. You might even go to the situation. You're going to ask that 16 year old, what belief system did you decide based on this situation? And let it talk to you. Let it give you the sentence. So it's like literally talking to yourself in the past. What belief system did you decide based on this? I decided that I wasn't worthy of blah, 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 blah. Okay, we, oh, we have a lot of 16-year-olds. Isn't that wild? Why did I use that example? 16, 15, 16, not feeling loved. Okay, so Christy, did your 16-year-old decide, I decided that I'm not lovable? We see how we want to change that sense? I wasn't worthy. Okay, good, very good. Michelle, dating someone, anyone was better than being alone, even if it was not a good relationship. Excellent. So ask your 16-year-old self, Michelle, what was the belief system? What was the statement? What was the sentence? So it could be something like, um, 
dating anyone. I, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. I have to be in a relationship. Whatever, whatever that sentence is that that age of you decided about relationships. So it could be like, I need to be with someone in order to be protected. I needed to, I need to be with someone in order to be safe, that type of thing. Lindsay, age four, healing around not being good enough. Right. So your age four, your four year old said, I'm not good enough. So good, good enough in general, or is it a specific situation? Right? So is it like, I'm not good enough to be loved by my parents, right? We want to get specific as possible because the more specific you can get, the deeper the pull. And this is for everybody. It does require you to step into those shoes just for 30 seconds. We're not going to relive any of the trauma, just enough to get that belief system. So all the things that you guys are doing is really great. Like, I don't want to be alone. I wasn't worthy. I'm not enough, right? Those are the themes. I need you to go one step deeper into, okay, so this is the theme. What did I decide about the theme at this age, right? So one step, okay, Michelle says, I'm not worth waiting for the others to care about me. Okay, I'm not important enough for others to care about me. Excellent, you got it. You got it, Lindsay. Michelle, I am not worth waiting for the right relationship. That's it, Christy. I wasn't worthy to be loved by my mom. Exactly, okay? That next step, everybody wants to stop at the theme, but the theme isn't gonna pull the undertow of that belief system that's holding all of that shit up. So try and get to that final peace like Michelle, Lindsay, and Christy just did. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. You guys don't have to type it if you don't want to share. That's okay. Let me know when you have it and you're ready. Now, when you get to that final statement, Michelle, Lindsay, and Christy, do not change the verbiage. Do not change any of those words. So Michelle, when we do the pull, you're going to do, I am not worth waiting. You're not going to change that to I'm Get it? You cannot change it. So Lindsay, the same thing. You have I'm, but you cannot change it to I am. Okay, it has to stay the same. I don't know why, but that's like the rule. <laughs> okay. So just going to give a few minutes. I know there's eight people on. We've got three responses. So I'm just going to give the other five people a minute to kind of go through that and get your statements. If you have your statement and you just don't want to share it, that's fine. Type in, I'm ready, let's go. Um, and we'll, we'll just move on. I'll give you like another 15 seconds. If you have any questions, you're having a hard time finding it, let me know. And then we're going to energetically pull it. <laughs> Good. We ready? Okay. All right, guides say we're ready. I really thought I healed this. That's the thing with these things, Christy, is that I had a lot of that stuff too where, you know, what, what are you talking about? I thought I freaking healed this. And the guides are just like, sometimes what happens is they show me a tree, right? Which is why I wanted you to get down to the nitty litty gritty statement, right? Because when you have a tree, a tree has a root, it has roots in the ground, it has a stump, and then it has branches. And nine times out of ten, people pull the branches of a belief system, which means the stump and the roots are still there. Sometimes you'll get past the branches and you'll be able to remove the stump. And so the stump and the branches are gone and you feel a lot different, but the roots are still there. So anytime you have a root of anything, a plant, a belief system, if you don't get to the root, the tree grows back. And so a lot of this with healing work is what are you grabbing? Are you pulling branches? Are you pulling stumps? Or are you getting to the root? This exercise today is helping everybody get to the root. Lindy, I wasn't worthy and would never be good enough. 
Okay, so what, how would your seven-year-old say that? What did she decide at seven based on that theme of worth and not being good enough? That's how you get to the root. That's a stump awareness, which is perfect. We got to get to the stump in order to get to the roots. But what's the root of it? So literally imagine your seven-year-old standing in front of you and asking her, what did you decide? What do you now believe about this situation because of this? And she'll probably answer in a very small voice like, I'm not good enough to play with all the other children. Or I wasn't worthy of my parents' affection not good enough to be chosen or included. Okay, I'm not good enough to be chosen or to be included. Excellent. There, root. I know it takes just that little bit more effort. Okay, we're running out of time. All right, so now we have our statements. Remember, you write them exactly how they are. So I'm gonna lead you through this process. We're gonna do it three times. The first time is gonna be a big pull, and then the next two times, it's gonna grab up all the roots to the energy of it, okay? So I like to put my hands on my heart. It's just a thing for me, but you can do it any way you want. I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I'm gonna do it, then we're gonna do it, okay? So we're gonna take a deep breath in, not yet, and we're gonna hold it. And I'm going to repeat a statement to you. You're going to repeat it in your head, okay? And then I'm gonna put a blank in there. It's gonna say, insert your statement, and your statement will be, uh, we'll use Lindy since it's here, not good enough to be chosen or included, okay? And you're going to hold your breath the whole entire time. I'm going to finish the statement and then tell you to exhale, okay? So make sure you take deep breaths because you can be holding your breath for quite a long time. The holding your breath is going to shut off one side of your brain so that the other side can be more active and find the energy. That's the reason why we hold the breath. When we're complete, we will fill all those things in, okay? All right, so in the meantime, here we go. We're going to do the first round. Whew, here we go. Everybody take a deep breath in and hold it. Repeat after me in your head. I command that all positive and negative mental and emotional blocks and programs times six with, insert your statement, be released now, four, seven, and all, exhale. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, ooh. Ooh, did you feel that? Okay. We're going to do this two more times. Oh, spinny. All right. Deep breath in. Hold. I command that all positive and negative mental and emotional blocks and programs times six with insert your statement. Be released now, four, seven, and all. Exhale. Oh. One more time. Ooh, spinny. Okay, hold on, we're gonna wait. Oh. The guys are asking me to wait a minute because a lot of you are really pulling deep, which is really good. We're just gonna wait for that energy to shift. Let me know if you can feel that in the box, in the comments. We're going to do it one last time, and this is going to completely clear that energetic thought form from the fields. Okay, here we go. Deep breath in and hold. I command that all positive and negative mental and emotional blocks and programs with your statement, say it exactly the way you wrote it, be released now, four, seven, and all, exhale. Good, good, nice light pull. Okay, your guides are all saying, release the resistance around it. Oh, oh, there you go. So for a lot of you, a lot of you are holding on to this piece. Ask yourself why. Why would I be holding on to this piece? How is it serving me right now? 
Can I let go? Do I want to let go? We're going to do this statement one more time because a lot of you are holding on. These are real kind of foundational structure pieces that we've built identities around. And I'm going to send you energetic information to you at the level of your soul energy to remind you that this is not your identity, to remind you of what your identity truly is. I'm just going to translate that, transmit that. Whew. There you go. Ha! Oh, now it's releasing. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> No. Okay, good. You guys did that. We don't even have to go through the statement again. Okay, so now just imagine yourselves just releasing those pieces and that you're just kind of like all those pieces are empty, right? There's some empty, beautiful spaces here that you've created. And we're going to invite you to imagine gold healing light of your own soul's essence. We call it soul streams. To soul stream in through the top of your head and to fill in all of those spaces and places you left blank, that you cleared out, that you removed, that you released, and fill them in with your own soul's essence. And we're asking that healing streams of grace come in and activate the appropriate healing numbers for you all, which is for today is the number 16. So we're activating healing streams of grace times 16, which means there's 16 healing processes that are going to come in within the next 30 to 60 seconds to help rearrange your energy. What that's going to do is make sure that these pieces that we cleared are actually gone. They're not going to bounce back. Ooh. We're going to invite you to activate the spiritual lessons times the appropriate number throughout the time space continuum so that you've learned the lesson in all the time spaces and realities so that it doesn't have to be learned again to activate those frequencies within you in your energy throughout time and through the multiverse and to bring the activation of those spiritual lessons back down to you here into this dimension into this reality into this time and space as you breathe we're asking your higher selves from the future as ascended masters to take care of any soul fragments and to help you reintegrate them in a gentle, easy, graceful way to activate those spiritual lessons and to release the trauma from those time and space continuums so that you don't have to experience that again and it stops cycling in your energetic fields. We're asking for an uh, update. Wait. Okay. Update of all your identity grids, personality grids, all ways in which you perceive and are perceived in the world. And to repattern all of those energetic pieces to the degree that you so choose. So it is. So the last piece to this is to take your statements that you wrote that you healed today. So for example, we're going to use Lindy's, Lindy's last one here. Sorry. Oh, we'll go up one. We'll do one up here. I'll pick on Lindy today. Okay, uh, Michelle, I'm not worth waiting for the right relationship. Now you're going to take those statements that you just cleared and you're going to recalibrate them. Write out an opposite statement to that. So Michelle, for example, I am worth waiting for period or the right relationship is I am worthy of the right relationship right now. I am worthy of being loved, whatever it is. You're going to write down three positive mantras that you're going to keep with you or around you and repeat as you go on to the next five to seven days. Anytime this energy wants to bounce back, you have the counteraction and the truth to what that is, which is the opposite. Does that make sense? And it is four o'clock. I am out of time. So thank you so much for joining us, you guys. I do have some programs that are um, launching right now. Feel free to message me, DM me, or comment below and ask, um, ask us how you can work with us. Um, we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Lindy, big energy. It should be. This group was huge. So thank you all for sharing. I hope that you found this to be helpful. And I hope this helps you to live your best life now. Let it be so. Oh, have a great day, you guys. We'll see you soon. Take care.